just got into shotgun shell reloading and bought a mech size master and rather than working with a million different bushings I ordered one of these universal charge bars and I noticed on YouTube that all of the videos are all in a foreign language nothing is in English so I decided to put this little video together to describe the charge bar and the first thing I noticed with the charge bar that I ordered and I bought this from Cabela's it just came today it's not even out of the package I noticed that the calibration scale is not engraved on the device on the adjustable portion and it is just stuck on with I guess glue and without even opening the package you can see that the adjustment scale is coming off whereas on one part of the device it is actually engraved but on the rotatable part, the vernier part it's coming off. On one side it seems to be sticking but on one side it's coming off. Now I haven't opened this package up yet and I have an email to the company requesting some information about what to do perhaps sticking it back on with super glue or whatever um, but I want to know how to correct this problem it would have been much better to have this as an actual engraving because uh, one needs to adjust this device to get a proper drop in powder charge and in lead charge All right, I got an email right away from the company that said to go ahead and scotch tape or cellophane tape the label back down to the device. And actually it's a uh, it's one of those aluminum foil type labels that are printed with a rubber cement type backing and I was able to stick the label down right back on to the device and it gave a uh, pretty secure position to it so what's in the package you have your charge bar you have this little bag of tools and supplies you have your powder baffle you have an instruction sheet that came with it and the instruction sheet is somewhat different than what's on the internet uh, warranty card and a powder chart which gives some rough references most of this stuff uh, is available on the web but not as detailed as it is in the kit itself um, you seniors will need your bifocals to read this chart. So let's go ahead and start to put things together. And putting it together is a little different than the way it is on the internet. Here's what's in the little bag. First of all, you have two set screws. And you'll have to take my word, there are two little plastic dowels in there too. And these will end up being screwed into the side of the charge bar plastic dowels first set screw and these lock down the veneer calibers there's a brass washer that's in there now the instructions say that there's a sharp edge and and uh, an up and down position this brass washer doesn't have any up and down position there's a little uh, hex wrench and then there's what they screw to move the bar back and forth this screw is different than the one that's on the mech bar apparently it lets the bar move further left and right so use this screw that comes with it there is a uh, zinc plug that's used when you're loading lead and then there's two plastic plugs that are used when you're loading steel and here is the baffle 
we're going to start to put this together first by putting the little plastic dowels in and gently tightening with the lock screws. Alright, plastic dowel first, then the little lock screw, and just barely tightening it in there so we don't lose things, and I've already done it on the opposite side. So both sides are done at this point. Next is going to be insertion of the zinc insert. There are also two plastic ones for a steel shot. The zinc is for lead shot. I'm only loading lead shot. Now the insert has a flat side and a hollow, hollowed out area. You want the uh, flat side to be on top and it's not just going to pop in there. It's going to take some uh, mounting with a hammer they said use a flat punch. We'll be back after we put this in. The way one removes this is there's a hole on the opposite end. One puts a punch through there to knock the insert out. So we'll be back after we do this. This has to be laying in there flat without any uh, elevation. Otherwise it will hinder movement in the charge bar. Alright, here we have the uh, zinc insert pounded in and I used a rubber mallet and also a uh, punch so be prepared make sure you have a punch I put this down on the uh, concrete floor of the garage and using the uh, punch and the rubber mallet I got it in and it operates pretty smoothly it's not perfectly flat they say you can sand it if it's not operating smoothly, but it appears to be operating pretty smoothly. Um, we're going to insert it now into the machine, into the mech machine. All right, I've taken out the uh, old charge bar that came with the machine, and I've inserted this as instructed. Now, they say to instruct it, insert it from the right side to the left side. and you're going to have to put those little set screws in deeper before you're able to do this. So tighten up the set screws on both sides and then put it in. All right, I've got my uh, universal charge bar in. I've replaced this filister screw with the screw that they provide, which apparently lets you have more left and right movement on this device. Um, looks pretty much the same to me. I'm using the washer that came with the mech unit. I don't just keep it tight and it's moving fairly smoothly back and forth I haven't had to shave anything off of the top of the zinc insert on the powder portion of the bar next instructions with the charge bar to the left is to remove the rubber grommet from the powder side which I can't do while I'm recording so I'm going to stop recording. Alright, I've got the rubber grommet out from the powder side. Then it says take the brass washer and it says put the sharp side down. I'll be honest with you, I, to me this brass washer is the same on both sides. I don't see any difference with it, but I'm going to put, I don't know, they both feel the same to me so I'm just going to put it in there and then replace the rubber grommet and I'm gonna have to probably shut off the video to do this let's see if I can get it in there I'm gonna shut the video off replace the rubber grommet alright I've got the uh, brass washer in I don't know which side is sharper they're both the same I've got the rubber grommet back I've already put on the uh, shot container and now we're going to put the baffle in does not have to be screwed in real tight now 
Then I'll put the powder bottle on, but before that I want to make sure that everything moves smoothly back and forth. And everything seems to be moving nicely. So the next step is going to be is to adjust everything and see what kind of powder drops we can get. I'm using uh, Clay's powder and the uh, settings on the universal charge bar from the company don't go down to as low a dose or low dose of clays that I planned on using uh, which is 16.3 grains so I knew that I had to uh, go to a lower dose or a lower setting than what was on the charts the chart lowest setting is 18 grains for this powder and so I experimented down until we got to a level that worked and of course this doesn't focus very good with an iPhone unfortunately so here's how you set the charge first of all here is the measuring line on the charge bar and here is the scale which goes from 0 to 20 and as maybe you can see if I could get it in focus you'll just have to take my word that that line lines up with the number 4 on the charge bar and then with various settings I played around with the fine-tuning of the vernier and ended up getting a setting of 24 with the reference marker right where you can see it with this tweezer again sorry it's a blur but that's an iPhone for you now this is the powder side the lead side works exactly the same way and you just have to do trial and error until you get it set right and so what I ended up with on the powder side was a setting of 4 plus 25 4 on the engraved portion and 25 on the veneer portion to give me a drop of 16.3 grains of clay and that worked very well. In addition, I did the same experimentation on the lead shot size and worked on a dose that gives you 7 eighths grain. Now, you can't just trust this to one throw of the powder to make sure that you're right and so I did multiple drops using a digital scale to measure each drop to make sure that I was getting within a safe range and with multiple drops it really didn't vary very much and I think this is just going to be as sensitive and complete as the charge bar that came with the mech unit and certainly is adjustable Clues for adjustment that the company says don't adjust it while you have powder in there obviously you can enlarge the opening with powder in there but you don't want to make it smaller with powder in there or lead in there because you're going to compress on your powder and lead that's already dropped in there so if you're going to to change the setting where you make things smaller less throw you probably ought to empty the bars out first the final thing is they say when setting the veneer portion is to clockwise turn to the number you want turn five more and then go back and that's the proper setting and with then you lock your screws so I've got this pretty well set up I've loaded some shells and then I've gone ahead and cut the shells open measure the lead load and the and the uh, powder load and uh, 
it's very acceptable and certainly safe. Um, unless you're using an electronic digital scale, you're not going to get a powder drop that's exact on every, uh, on every one of these loads. But you're going to be in the safe range, uh, not being off by very much. And then the most times, you're going to be right on the button, period. Finally, here's my setup. Here's my Max Size Master, my Lee Loader 2, which my wife plays around with that for the Christmas tree lights, and a uh, Lee Classic uh, turret, which really works well. I do have a digital powder scale, which I don't use very often. One of these RCBS units, it's very good. If you're going to load rifle, you know, you need, you need something accurate. But whenever you're working with any of these drop techniques where you're working on the basis of volume, you're going to have differences that occur. So just be prepared for them. As long as you're in the safe range, you're okay. Now, the, what I'm using for my loads is directly off of the Hogden website. Um, uh, I didn't make up any of these loads. I'm using CCI primers. Um, I'm using the Remington STS shells. I'm using uh, clays, and I have seven and a half lead shot. This is magnum uh, hard lead shot. Um, these these are directly from the website, and obviously with shotgun loading, there's really no variation. You follow the guide, and I'm making very light loads. These are very light loads. Um, the WADs are the uh, WA-12L. If I remember right, let me check that and make sure. Yeah, this is the Winchester WA-12L. I know this video is not very professionally made, and uh, I jump around a lot. Uh, I am not a expert YouTube video maker, but this is helpful material, and I think uh, since there's nothing in English on this Mac uh, charge bar, actually it's the universal charge bar, uh, and the website is going to be listed on the uh, type-in area, um, it's, worth, it's worth buying in my opinion. And the company responded very fast to my email question. Uh, hopefully they do better with engraving these scales, but it's not that critical, really. You can you can also use micrometer to measure on the charge bar itself how far apart uh, everything is. In case there's any question that you want to calibrate it using a micrometer, uh, and we all have one if we're doing our own reloading. Thanks for watching, and if there's any questions, uh, contact me.